Hey guys, so out in the woods today and uh, I want to show you a couple pieces of uh, military surplus gear that um, I think are good options for people who are just starting off doing bushcraft or even camping. Um, the first thing we're going to look at is the French F1 commando tent. Um, there's a lot of good information on the web about these. They've been around for a little while. Um, it's an interesting concept and military surplus that you can get fairly cheaply. I think you can get these things under um, $50 if I'm not mistaken. So uh, I'm going to show you the one that I have. We're going to set it up and see how it looks and uh, kind of talk through some of the issues and pros and cons. And um, after that, I also want to show you a Swiss engineer's ruck or the Swiss rubberized ruck. Um, another awesome op option out there for backpacks, but um, a little bit harder to find. Uh, they're, they're, the surplus in those are starting to dry up and they're getting more and more expensive. So you can spend over a hundred dollars on a new, on one that's not been issued. Um, or less on ones that have been issued in our kind of rough condition. So we'll take a look at that and uh, hopefully I'll give you guys some more options on budget bushcraft because um, you know the whole goal of this series is that you guys don't have to spend tons of money to go out camping and have fun and that's the whole point is getting out in the woods and doing something and just enjoying yourself and uh, it is gorgeous right now in my neck of the woods the temperatures have dropped um, it was under 50 this morning when I woke up and it's I think it's barely 60 right now so it's a good day to come out the woods and set up some gear and play so so commercial stakes comes in a nice nylon stuff sack Then it has two sets of poles. And these are really interesting because they're aluminum, but they have springs inside of them instead of shock cord. And then they have this uh, foot, plastic foot. And there's the tent. So one of the first things I always do is set up my ground cloth. This tent does not come with a ground cloth. So you want to make sure that you figure out what you need. I think this is about five by seven. I'll have d dimensions below. But um, so you can either use a poly tarp or a piece of Tyvek sheeting. Uh, that works really well too. There's a lot light, more, more lightweight. Now right now you can tell that the ground cloth is much larger than the tent and that's a problem. Um, if you've never set up a tent before and you don't know this, um, your ground cloth needs to go underneath your tent, not on the outside of your tent, uh, because it will create a basically a gutter and all the rain will go right underneath your tent. So for this purpose what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold my ground cloth in on the side and fold the back in so it's underneath the tent but I wanted to have something underneath the floor of this tent to protect it because there's just no way with all this debris on the floor um, you don't want to put the tent directly in the ground uh, it's a good way of puncturing it and you know the tarp on the bottom also helps with moisture it manages the uh, the moisture so because the ground moisture is going to be coming up from the ground at night so you definitely want to get a tarp underneath your your tent Now it's all set up. So I didn't do a complete setup on this thing. And I'm going to walk you through what we got here. So 
front of the tent there is a guy line that comes down and pulls tight to the front there's your front door and then you've got three guy lines on the side there's one there there's one in the middle I didn't pull that one out just to save time is that one in the back you got the guy line in the back it holds up that pole and of course same thing on the other side there's also additional points that you can stake out right here in the middle of the tent on the sides and the back and the front so if you really want a t nice tight pitch I would suggest doing all these and you'll get a it'll look a lot nicer and you know if you pull this side out you're gonna get more ventilation through the sides I'm gonna show you how that works so there it is now if you're a bigger guy this is gonna be this is gonna be the problem is getting in and out of this thing with this pole right in the middle You really gotta bend down. Man, this sucker. Here's the, the side vents. This is nice. I really like this because with any tent, ventilation is a big issue. Um, if you pull the side out and then roll this down, this, this flap right here, you're going to get some nice cross ventilation while you're sleeping. And then if you don't want that much wind, let's say you have wind coming from this side of the tent, well, you can just velcro that back up <clears throat> and then you're protected there's also ventilation up there and of course ventilation in the front door which you'd probably have closed anyway but um as far as room in this thing now i'm not going to go all the way inside of it because i got my boots on but i'm six one and a half and I've got plenty of room in here to sleep and uh, enough room for my gear next to me. You, you know, you could do two guys in this thing. It'd be tight, but maybe like for a father and a son, um, a this might be a nice economic option to try out. Now, I've done nothing to this tent. This tent is brand spanking new. This is the first time setting it up. I've done nothing to it to get it ready there's a few things that I would definitely do. I would go through and seam seal the crap out of this thing. And I would seam seal everything because there's one thing that you probably notice with this tent. There is no rain fly. This is a single wall tent. Now, that's really not an issue because any of us who tarp camps understands that that's, you know, you have a single, single tarp, a single layer, and that repels water just fine. But um with a single wall tent you need to make sure that your seal your seams are very well sealed so i'll go through i'll take this back home set it up and seal everything nice and and tight and um that'll help a lot uh ground cloth like i said before definitely have to have a ground cloth that's very important so i need to figure out if i'm going to use this tarp which is kind of heavy or if i'm going to get something a little bit lighter i'd like to get a tyvek um ground cloth or sheet if anybody um, has a source for those that would be awesome um, I know you can drive around construction sites sometimes and ask guys I don't know anybody and I don't feel comfortable just begging for that kind of stuff but um, that's what I'd like to get is a, a Tyvek sheet that way it would lighten the load a little bit and then lighter stakes like I said don't use the the issue stakes they're very heavy and you can, so I got enough room here I can raise myself up I think if I pulled this thing tighter on the sides, I could definitely get more headspace in here. I mean, right now this is set up pretty quickly just for demonstration, so you guys could see it. But man, this is a this isn't bad. And uh, I think my next camping trip I'm gonna do, which um, 
hopefully it'll be here in October, if not sooner, I'm going to use this tent and um, we'll see how it performs. But uh, I'm really digging the space in this thing. And I just love the old school military look to it. You know, it reminds me of uh, Boy Scouts and all that stuff when I was a kid. But the, you know, it's all nylon material, so it's a little bit lighter weight. It's not canvas. And I think that's uh, a big plus. All right, I got the pitch a little bit tighter. I adjusted those ends and I went ahead and staked out the middle just to see what that would do. And that definitely helps make for a tighter pitch. I think that's definitely going to be a necessity when you set this thing up. There's the screen door exposed with the, the outer doors pulled back and tied back. And all the guy lines have these plastic tensioners on them. Which is nice. That's a nice feature. And the cordage, I think, that came with it is pretty decent. You could upgrade that to some reflective cordage if you want to make it a little more visible at night. This top seam right here, if there's going to be any issues, it's going to be right here with this tent. And this this needs to be seam sealed. You can tell it is not. It has this uh, kind of nylon edging material on it. So once the rain soaks into that, then it's going to start going through the tent, I think. So you really got to get this coated down with some silicone. Uh, same thing up here at that point. And then down these edges. Any edges or corners is what you're going to want to seam seal. So I am a sucker for old school military vintage uh, surplus. And the European stuff I think is particularly interesting and cool. Uh, it's, it's not always the lightest weight. It's not always the most comfortable, but it certainly is fun to collect and to try out and kind of see what how other people used to do things. And uh, one of the packs that I have is this old Swiss rubberized rucksack. Uh, these replace the salt and pepper rucksacks that you see which were canvas and leather and they went to this rubberized material i think this pack is let's see if i can find the date on it sometimes on the straps they have the date uh, there it is what does that say The 85 looks like 85 1985 so in the 80s they were still using these things and what's great about this pack is it is so heavy duty um, it is not going to break tear and repellency with this pack because of the rubberizing and you can just load this thing down with gear and it is bomb proof now of course with a pack of this type it has a very primitive suspension system compared to modern packs let me get this out of the way it is leather and there is no padding on it but I was able to carry that into the woods today fairly comfortably it's not a long distance I had walk but it worked and um, it did the job I would not want to do any backpacking trip with this thing that's for sure but for uh, if you're camping close to your vehicle and you only have like less than a mile to walk into, then I think you'd be okay. Um, if uh, you want to use this as a day pack where you want to take a little extra gear with you, you could certainly do that. Um, it has this really nice heavy duty leather pad in the back. And what this does is that actually sets on your lower back in kind of your lumbar area and supports that way. And then the pack is curved back here which is nice because that actually gives you some airflow. So this thing kind of sets back off of your back and not against it, which is, you know, important since this is rubber um, because that would make you sweat like crazy. And then there are, uh, there's some type of frame sewn into this thing. You can see the stays. So it's nice and solid in the back. 
Uh, it's a bag that you can sit on the ground and not worry about moisture coming through the bottom because it is all leather on the bottom right here. And um, it also is able to stand up on its own so you can get into your pack pretty easily. It has this generous cover on the top. And then you've got a collar like that that you can um, cinch down your load and that helps with the water repellency as well. And then a front pocket right down there, which is pretty generous. Good size. I've got a cook kit in there and a couple other odds and ends. And then one other thing to note on this pack, the sides have these leather tabs that you can run straps through. So that way you can attach, you know, hang an ax or, or something else. What I've done is I put shock cord on this side. And then what I can do is I can just slip my ax in there and then pull this tight and then do the same thing on the bottom and that'll secure my axe. So it's a lot lighter than getting leather straps using the shock cord and uh, these cord locks. All right, time for some lunch. I am uh, i haven't cooked lunch out in the woods on a day trip for a while now, it seems like. It seems like forever, but... So what I got going on today is do something a little bit different. I've uh, pulled out a uh, handmade, homemade alcohol stove, pop can stove, and put together this little cook kit for today, and I've got my uh, Lost Wild Universal Fit cup lid, and I've got my Holly Camp cup, and there's the alcohol. There's pop can stove. So I'm going to set that up and then we're going to cook some lunch. So there's lunch today. A little shrimp flavored top ramen, but very lucky. I have some leftover shrimp from uh, dinner last night that I had on the barbecue. So we're going to add that to it. And of course, some sriracha sauce will be added as well. So a little Look at that. Nice. All right, so you can see the Swiss ruck on my back. It's definitely, you know, not for the faint of heart. <clears throat> Let's put it that way. You, uh, if you never carried a pack like this, it's definitely different than carrying a modern pack with all the padding and everything. But if it's not overloaded, it's really not that bad. The way it sits on your back, it sits up, on me it sits up high in the middle of, uh, of my lower back. That makes sense. And um, smaller frame person, they probably ride even better. But I think for like a winter day pack where you're taking a lot of gear with you, it could be kind of fun. I just like, I like old style gear sometimes. Like changing things up. Anyway, thanks for watching and we will see you next time on the Prepared Wanderer.